What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTP Ravens Media, bringing you Ravens content every single day. If you want to see that daily Ravens content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell as well if you want to get notified every single time I upload a brand new video. Now, in this video today, I'm going to be talking about the restructured contract of Marlon Humphrey and what the $7 million in cap space that was created out of that deal could be used for so in the comment section down below let me know your thoughts you know who should the ravens go after will the ravens go after anyone um and things of that nature but before i get into this video i do want to say guys i'm going to be going live on tiktok tonight i believe at 10 p.m eastern time i believe it's at 7 p.m uh, pacific time which is my time i'll be uh, live with my friend matt um, and then i'll also be live on wednesday um talking about basketball this is part of a san diego based uh, sports media, but I'm I'm purely talking overall NFL and overall basketball. Um, so you guys should come through if you guys uh, want to. I'll put out the links on Twitter and things like that. But should be a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's called America's Finest Sports. If you guys are interested, but now let's get into the video. So, like I said before, Marlon Humphrey restructured his contract. That was the big guy. All right, if you're looking at the Ravens and what they can do in order to make cap space or create cap space, the biggest two were. Resign Lamar Jackson, convert a lot of that into a signing bonus you could create, I want to say about $10 million uh, by by extending Lamar Jackson, but that's much more difficult to do because there's a lot more logistics going into that, or restructure Marlon Humphrey, and that's what they decided to end up doing. Now, they're also working towards that contract extension with Lamar, but at least they got the $7 million because Marlon got eight. Um, basically, he got... $8 million turned into a signing bonus, um, and that created the $7 million in cap space. So when you look at the Ravens roster and the things that they need to do, they still have a, they still have a David Ojabo that they need to sign. I believe that's the lone rookie that they are still needing to sign. Okay, maybe that's a, you know, a million or so. We'll see what, what that ends up becoming. But the Ravens now have money in order to make a move. They can sign a veteran. Now, are they going to be able to make a trade for, you know, a high-end, you know, player? No, because they don't have that kind of money. But they do have the type of money to make signings like they did late last offseason. You know, Justin Houston, right? You know, comes in three, four, five million dollar deals for a veteran trying to get a one-year prove-it deal. That's something they can do. So, who are the veterans in positions of need? that could be looking at a one-year prove-it deal. Biggest name, uh, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, I think would be Jason Pierre-Paul, which I think is uh, very fitting for the Baltimore Ravens because their edge rush uh, isn't amazing and they don't really have a lot of experience. They have Justin Houston, they have um, Tyus Bowser. That's about it in terms of edge rushers. And Tyus Bowser is coming off of a season-ending injury. JPP has already come in to to meet with the Ravens. The Ravens ended up signing Justin Houston, but they could also sign JPP as a player to help boost that pass rush until they can get, um, you know, Tyus Bowser back to full health, until they can get David Ojabo onto the field. All those types of things. Just having another really proven veteran in the locker room could help them. Now, switching over to the offensive side of the ball, there are plenty of moves that the Baltimore Ravens can make. I think the biggest position is wide receiver because... Right now, Joshua and I talked about it. I believe it was Saturday's video, but it's the most recent uh, Trust the Bank podcast recording. We talked about how there's only four wide receivers the Raven we know the Ravens will have on the roster, right? You know, it's Rashad Bateman, Tylen Wallace, James Prochet, and Devin Duvernay. That's all we got. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we have other players. Uh, Benjamin Victory is right now on the PUP list. Uh, Devin Williams has been reinstated onto the 90-man roster. Shamar Bridges, Makai Polk. You know, there's undrafted players, but no proven guys. So what are the wide receivers the Ravens can maybe bring in? And there's the high-end guys that I don't know if they would sign for that low. Guys like Julio Jones and Odell Beckham Jr. I don't think that they would sign for that low. However, there are players at the wide receiver position that could sign for that amount of money. Guys like John Ross, guys like Will Fuller. Now, I know that these players are not as good as a Julio Jones as a Nodal Beckham Jr. However, they are very good at the one thing that they do, which is go deep. Do the Ravens have a deep threat currently? 
No, they do not. And again, when I say deep threat, so many people, every time I say, oh, the Ravens don't have a deep threat. So many people say that, think of that as me saying the Ravens don't have a single player that can run a deep route. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying a player that is specifically supposed to only go deep. And the defense knows this and they have to cover over the top. Devin DuVernay can run a deep route. Rashad Bateman can run a deep route. Tylen Wallace can run a deep route. But when they line up on the outside, the defense isn't looking at like that, like, oh man, we have to put a guy over the top. Like, we got to watch out for this guy. They're looking at him like, okay, maybe he's going underneath, maybe he's going over the middle. If you throw a John Ross, if you throw a Will Fuller on the outside, teams say, okay, we can't get beat over the top. It's the same thing that we had with um, Marquise Hollywood Brown. Now, Hollywood also ran underneath routes, but whenever Marquise lined up on the outside, teams would double him. And they would, or not, it's not doubling. They put a safety over top so that he couldn't get behind the defense. None of the Ravens' current wide receivers are forcing a safety over the top. And a safety over the top means one less player in the box and one less player over the middle of the field, which would allow Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman, Devin Duvernay, James Prochet, Tyler Wallace, all those guys to get underneath, get across the middle of the field with less players defending them. John Ross, Will Fuller, are players that could do that. Now, there's other players as well. I believe Deshaun Jackson is still available. I'm actually going to pull up a list right now. Um, but we'll see We'll see who they're able to uh, go after because I do think they're going to try and make a move. Now, are they done making moves? Or maybe. But are they going to still try to find ways to free up cap space? Probably because Lamar Jackson is the biggest way to free up cap space. They're working on that. They really want to get it done. I I, I still think it'll get done before the season. I predicted this weekend it didn't happen. Uh, looks like the Ravens were working on the Marlon Humphrey thing. Uh, but here, here's the other players that are still available. Uh, T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of his uh, because he's not a real deep threat anymore in his prime. Yeah, you cover over the top against T.Y. Hilton, but not really anymore. Cole Beasley could be a slot receiver signing for the Ravens that we would go, oh yeah, Here's our guy. He can play in the slot. Boom. Then we can throw Duvernay on the outside, Prochet on the outside, Wallace on the outside, Bateman on the outside. And Cole Beasley, he, he is a very good slot wide receiver. He's not a lot, he's not much more than that, but he's a slot wide receiver and he's good. Uh yeah, Deshaun Jackson's still available. This is according to Spot Track. Uh, you know, maybe a DD Westbrook. I, I don't really see that. Th those are kind of the only names that I'm seeing that are really like guys that I could see being, you know, difference makers. Yeah, I, I, I Alan Hearns, maybe, as a, as a big body, but he really hasn't been the same guy he was since he was the number two to Alan Robinson back in Jacksonville. So uh, overall, yeah, looking at it, Julio, Will Fuller, T.Y. Hilton, Emmanuel Sanders, uh, Cole Beasley, Deshaun Jackson, Odell Beckham Jr., um, and I believe John Ross is still available as well. But those are kind of the players that I'm looking at as, hey, we can sign them. More, less, or less so Julio and Odell. But the Will Fullers, the Cole Beasleys, the Deshaun Jacksons, the John Rosses, those are players that we would sign and they would be able to fix one small aspect of the roster. Would they be out there every play? No. But that's why we're only paying them, you know, four or five million dollars. If we bring in a Julio, we bring in an Odell Beckham Jr., they're out there every play. We're paying them a 10, maybe 12 million dollars a year. This restructure from the Ravens, I think, is very good. It's a very good move for them to do. It, it's a needed move and it really helps with the cap space. And these are the moves that I think so many people always forget about. Because all offseason, the Ravens, all we hear about is, oh, the Ravens don't have cap space. What the heck? They're, they're totally messing up. The Ravens do have cap space. They just don't go into every offseason and say, all right, let's restructure everyone all at once so then we can free up. Because the Saints, right, they do this at the beginning of every offseason. Saints have freed up $28 million in cap space, restructuring contracts. The Ravens don't do it at the beginning. Because the Ravens wait and see, and they're like, hey, maybe we, you know, maybe we'll need someone. And then they go, okay, we kind of need this player. Marcus Peters, here you go. You want to restructure? 
there, we got our, you know, $6 million or whatever it is. And then they sign that player. They go, hey, Ronnie Stanley and Justin Tucker, you guys want to restructure? We'll get $18 million. Boom, they sign a player out of that. They don't do it all at once, which makes it seem like they're doing it less. But in reality, they're freeing up, they free up the same amount of cap space as all these other teams. It just doesn't get recognized nearly as much because it's in smaller increments. Instead of doing one day of freeing up $20 million, they do four times across the span of five months, freeing up $7 million each time. The Ravens free up cap space, just like every other team. Uh, they just don't do it all at once. It's not a bad, you know, you can do it either way. The fans appreciate when you do it all at once. Uh, but it, it doesn't really make a huge difference. If the Ravens need money, they always figure out a way to be able to get that money. They have more ways of getting money. If they, you know, drop Chuck Clark, if they, you know, extend Lamar Jackson, they can still do these things. But let me know in the comment section down below, what do you want the Ravens to do with the extra $7 million they have in this cap space? What do you want them to do? Thank you everybody for watching. Subscribe for Daily Ravens content. If you guys want to come through the TikTok live, there's also a YouTube channel. Um, it's barely set up. You guys can watch on YouTube as well. I'll put that link um, in the comment section of this video. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see all of you again tomorrow.